Hello and a very warm welcome to this latest edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And my guest today is a man who has looked at the world around him, come to the conclusion that it is not fair and not just, and decided to try and do something about it. And here is that man, Dieter Overath. Thank Hello. you very, very much for joining us here in Berlin today with Talking yeah, Germany. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Great stuff. Now, Dieter Overath is one of the key figures in the fair trade movement here in Germany. He's currently the managing director of the increasingly influential organization called Transfair, which he established just over two decades ago. The declared aim is quite simply to get more fair trade products into consumers' shopping carts. And that could, I tell you, include flowers, because we've never had flowers here on the Talking Germany show before, but we do have today because Dieter has brought some along for us as an example of fair trade yeah yeah even in a supermarket around the corner so the taxi driver had to drive five minutes more this is after you arrived in berlin from the airport yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and um, and we just choose an ordinary supermarket here and that is let's say one principle that you have not to go any longer only to a third world shop yeah that you can do your fair shopping just around the corner and around the corner at a local supermarket here in berlin you brought the flowers which have your seal your fair trade yeah. seal yeah you are a man who is associated with fair trade in germany here uh, and, and with the with the seal here tell me what fair trade is i mean it's a it's a term that everybody has heard i think but i'm yeah. not sure that everybody understands it yeah there are clear criteria so we are setting standards in each product category for example here in flowers we uh, define a, a, prem a fair trade premium of 10 percent of the fob price and these 10... What, what, what price? What, what was that? Uh, uh, free on board. Okay. That means 10% has to go to a special account mm -hmm. and only the workers of the flower farm, in oh, this yeah. case it's a, flam, a farm in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia? they can okay. decide what we should do mm -hmm. with the fair trade premium. If it goes into better education, if it goes into health programs, in housing, etc., it doesn't go to the management. Mm -hmm. So our aim is not that the farm owner gets richer. <laughs> our aim is to empower producers. Mm -hmm. And in other products, like in coffee, we define a minimum price. And the production cost, uh, at least it has to cover the production cost, and then also a fair trade premium, which goes above. And then the small farmers in Latin America, in Africa, in India, etc., can decide by themselves what to do. And this is under control. OK, we'll talk much, much more about that in detail. Now, yeah. I've understood the first principles of fair trade, yeah? We, we're going to find out more about fair trade. I'd like to just ha get a word from you, first of all, though. In my introduction to you, I said you're the kind of person who looks at the world and decided that it's not fair, it's not just he wants to change the world. Is that true? Is that who you are? Uh, yeah, I, I think... <laughs> uh, 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 on one hand, the third world is putting all the products on the table. The clothing is mostly produced in Asia and, and, and somewhere else, and we want everything cheap. Mm -hmm. And I think that's unfair, because if when we sell a, a, a German Volkswagen somewhere in the world, or any kind of machine, we want a, a certain price, and we say the workers uh, have to get a good salary, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. When we get products from somewhere else in the world, we think it has to be as cheap as possible. And this is unfair. Mm -hmm. And even in our own interest, I think we should be interested that living conditions are getting better in Africa or in other areas. And due to our understanding, this has to be done by trade and not aid. I think we have to overcome this attitude. Okay. You've had your first impressions there from Dieter Overath. Here is a little bit more, especially about the organisation that he runs. It all began with coffee. Pickers in this plantation in Guatemala earn more than the usual market wages. Their cooperative operates according to social and ecological rules, for which their German trade partners pay more. And that's the principle of fair trade. Around 1% of German consumers are willing to pay more for fairly traded goods. An insignia certifying fair trade has been conferred for 21 years by the Cologne-based organization Transfair. 
Many countries now have such fair trade initiatives, and in 2005 they agreed to adopt a common logo. Dieter Overath started as a one-man operation in 1992. He turned a small coffee-producing cooperative into a hard-hitting team. Nowadays, the 58-year-old directly employs 35 people. He has tirelessly campaigned for fair trade principles and enlisted prominent supporters for the cause. And it's caught on. Today, even the big discount supermarkets have begun to offer fairly traded goods such as fair footballs from Pakistan and fair flowers from Kenya. There's hardly a commodity or product that can't be traded fairly on world markets. The Wuppertal-based trading company Gepa was the first to take on Transfair Fair Trade Insignia as a licensee. We engage in long-term trading partnerships. We pay for the goods long before they arrive here to give the producers money for investment. We create trading conditions that give producers who would be disadvantaged on the world market a chance to develop. Thanks to Transfer and its committed founder, more and more people are buying fairly traded goods. And today he's our guest on Talking Germany, Dieter Overath. Yeah, Dieter Overath, we agreed that you are the kind of person who wants to change the world around you to make it a more just world. I, uh, and I want to understand where that comes from in your biography. And to get there, let's just go back to your very early days, to your yeah. childhood now, and have a look at one or two photos there. And just tell us about your childhood. Um, let's see, we've got those photos. There we go. Yeah, that... We are not, we have not been small farmers, but uh, we lived in Cologne yeah. and we had, um, my father built a house and that was in a community where poor families mm. work together. So all the neighbors concentrated on building one house when it was ready, then they took, uh, uh, they worked together for the next one. Oh, that's very interesting. And, and uh, this social orientation yeah. in the that area was the that you the only would... chance that we could live in a house because my father was a postman uh -huh. and he didn't earn enough uh, uh, to, 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 to build or to buy a, mm -hmm. a house. So that was interesting that this small village in Cologne, yeah. uh, uh, that each house was built by the community. That's very, very interesting that, indeed. That, yeah. yeah, that was in the, in the late 50s. Yeah. And um, we had a small garden mm -hmm. and nearly all the food we have eaten from potatoes to apples, we had chicken, etc. So it, it was a bit living in the countryside, but on, on the other hand, we lived in Cologne. Yeah. Not in the center, not mm -hmm. uh, near the cathedral, but let's say part of the uh, city of Cologne. So I, I have uh, uh, good, uh, good thinking about this time. It was a tough one. Mm -hmm. My father was a postman. Yeah. We, we didn't have a car or telephone or yeah. television. All these things came quite late, always, uh, 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 always late. But yeah, I, I think it uh, has given me... Um, a lot of important things and uh, maybe not automatically leading to fair trade, yeah. but to be grounded is one of the most important things for my life. That's fascinating. Let's talk about fair trade because uh, I think one of the most important aspects of the fair trade debate is to try and discover how far fair trade has penetrated into society, into the markets. And I, I have a quote from you. Not too long ago, you said, you hope one day that fair trade might become mainstream. That yeah. would seem to imply that it is not mainstream. Why is, why is that? Uh, yeah, I think we are a bit talking about Germans. And uh, on, on one hand, we are all against child work. Child on, labor. Child labor. Yeah. And on the other hand, we are let's say, fascinated to save money by during chopping. Mm -hmm. And I think the first discounter in the world uh, was founded uh, in Germany and Aldi and Lidl and all the other discounters are now going all over the... Huge chains that have a, a, a global yeah. reach. Yeah. yeah, and that has led to a situation that uh, uh, we are used to it to buy cheap food. Mm -hmm. 
On the other hand, we want that uh, the animals are treated fair, etc., etc. We do not want the way of production. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, even with my parents, I thought my mother was glad when she went shopping and she always was looking where I can buy a cheap coffee. And even if she had to go, I don't know, five or six kilometers, mm -hmm. she bought three pounds of cheap coffee mm -hmm. and she felt happy. And that is something... Oh, yeah, we're seeing you. You're talking that, about your mother here, and we're actually seeing your mother yeah, here in the family a, photo. Oh, yeah, it's a funny... <laughs> uh, it's a funny one. Yeah. And uh, that is something where I have seen that the way of shopping, of course, at these days, there was no reflection at all mm -hmm. about. But my, my, my first People visit... People weren't a, conscious and aware consumers yeah. in my those days. My first visits yeah. have been when I was active in Amnesty International. Yeah. And when you go to Central America and you see, uh, uh, you learn a lot about human rights relation, you automatically come, this is a coffee nation. Salvador was called a coffee republic or the, 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 the naming of being a banana republic in Costa Rica, etc., yeah, yeah. had to do with products. With commodities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk about your, your role in all this, because when we were looking at the report, uh, the, the, the portrait of you there, there were some shots of you as a relatively young activist, and you told me while we were watching it that, that, yeah. that you went to one of the big discounters in Germany and, that, and you were taken away by the police, quite literally. Since then, what has happened is that you are now working and cooperating with that big yeah. discounter. Tell us about that process because I yeah. think that's so important. They didn't take us seriously. They mm. thought the, the idea of fair trade has to remain in the so-called third world shops. Mm -hmm. That's nothing for mainstream. Mm -hmm. The consumers are not willing to pay more for commodities. Mm -hmm. That was their they way of thinking. And I think fair trade, the special on fair trade is that on one hand, we are driven by civil society, a lot of NGOs are supporting. And after the first year, when uh, even a phone call just took two minutes with a retailer, and you could see that uh, uh, this phone call comes to an end, and they said, forget it, Mr. Overard, forget about this idea. The German housewife will not pay any cent more. Mm -hmm. Clack. Mm -hmm. Over. And then with a lot of groups, church groups, as we made an initiative that a lot of women walked to the supermarkets and tried to talk with the owner or with employees in the supermarket. They said, we are buying here each day, but we want a fair trade coffee. That was, let's say, beginning. And then this supermarket uh, uh, gave a phone call to the regional coordinator and said, Okay, five women, ten women came and asked me for a bloody fair trade product. What's going on? Then the regional coordinator gave a phone call to the headquarter <laughs> and they said, there's something going on. The people want something crazy. Yeah. And the same person who uh, responded to me saying, forget about this idea, two months later gave me a phone call and said, okay, we are putting a fair trade coffee into the shelves. Tell me what the difference is between the work that people do in one of these third world stores, which you get all over Germany and have been in yeah, Germany cities. Around 600 what, shops. What's the difference between what they do and what you do? Yeah, I think fair trade includes the word trade. Mm. And they are more politi politically driven and they like to discuss, which is a good thing because you can discuss a lot yeah. how fair is the world uh, 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 business. And but it's not the case that our fair trade labeling initiative is not political. Mm -hmm. That means, but we have to put some weight uh, on, uh, on the table. Yeah. And for example, in flowers, when you get more and more successful, you are changing uh, the production scheme in Kenya. For example, in Kenya and, and Ethiopia, the environmental standards wages, the non-fair trade farms get difficulties to get good workers. Mm -hmm. That means by this, when you get more relevant, 
you can change things. Even in bananas in UK, where there's a market share of around 40% of fair trade bananas, then you can change Chiquita, you can change Dole. If you are at, at a 1% level, they say, okay, a bit of fair trade doesn't affect our business. Well, Let's go on like we did it in the past. Let me understand this in concrete terms, because you just mentioned wages, for example. One of the promises of fair trade, one of the things that I understand is that if I buy fair trade goods, I'm going to do something towards uh, fair wages in the producer country. Yeah. How do, you, how do you decide, how do you, you know, what are fair wages? How is that yeah. worked out? Yeah. Um, we are stakeholder driven. That means setting standards, it's not one person and overnight who says, okay, the minimum price for coffee should be this. We have tough discussions between producers. Of course, they always want more. Mm -hmm. And then retailers, traders, importers. And the outcome of this discussion, at least there should, the minimum price should cover production cost. Okay. I think there's no discussion. Yeah. Yeah. about. And then a good question is, to what extent the fair trade premium leads to in investment in quality, in, in education, etc. How we should define uh, the fair trade premium. And of course, if you say one dollar more, and the retailer says, we will not find any consumer who is willing to pay, uh, let's say, uh, uh, two euros more for one a pound of coffee, yeah. then it will not work. Okay. So I think it's a balance between the interest of the producers, and this is in the focus of fair trade, but also a, a, with what is possible on the market. And how do you how do you actually because very important to production and working conditions yeah. you know, in all this equation? How do you actually monitor that? Yeah. How do we, I know that you are yeah. getting it right? We, we, it's called Flow Cert, that is the worldwide certification company, and it is by far the biggest uh, certification company in, in social certification in the world. Mm -hmm. They are separated from, from Fairtrade as NGO, because we are convinced that uh, certification and control has to be independent. Yeah. And not influenced by marketing people who say, okay, we need this uh, 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 chocolate producer, even if they are not fulfilling the fair trade criteria, let them in. No, this is not possible. We have more than 100 well-trained inspectors mm -hmm. and they are not going from Cologne or from Bonn just one day to Kenya, looking a bit around and coming back. No, they are based there. They are good trained and well-paid because the overall important problem is corruption. Yeah. And uh, if they are not well paid, then of course there's a certain danger. So I think that we have a good network yeah. of inspectors that in the whole supply chain, the producer, the exporter, the importer, the trader and retailer, each quarter has to give us the figures mm -hmm. how much did they buy under fair trade conditions? What is surprising? How much did they sell? To avoid that not that uh, not more fair trade products are sold here mm -hmm. as bought in the producing countries. So okay. I think it's. Let, let's talk just about one 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 other aspect because there's a, a, a relatively recent development is that there are not just fair trade networks. There are also fair trade towns and cities. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I think we are not just a, a, a brand on the package, a logo on the package. It's in each country, it's uh, also driven by civil society. In, in, for example, in Germany, we have 37 relevant NGOs like Bread for the World, Miseria, mm -hmm. uh, uh, consumer organizations, etc. And Fairtrade Towns is one expression that civil society wants a, 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 a better, that the third world gets a better deal. And even the cities are also consumer. They buy coffee, the policeman uh, has, uh, wears a uniform, etc., etc. And to start here, mm -hmm. that uh, even the, the, the city or, or the regional, uh, uh, the region also has to come to to, to fair trade, it's yeah. a tough work.
It's a very interesting report about a very interesting project, and I know that it's very close to your heart. Yeah, it's um, because I myself only passed the eight, nine years on an ordinary high school. And yeah. then I start being a postman, as my father was, or uh, in, in a trainee as an officer. And I was glad that even with this low level of education, yeah. I could do other things. And my, my wife, she's a teacher in a school like this, and they even do not get a, a real chance. And that is something because before fair trade... I, I, need to, I need to explain because I think yeah. it's very important that the viewers understand the German education system is effectively a three-tier system. Yeah. And you were at the, you were at, at the, low, at the yeah. lower tier of the system yeah. as the kids essentially in this yeah. report. Yeah? yeah. And what it means is that they don't get a fair chance after that. You, were, you, were, you battled your way up the system. Yeah. Do and kids uh, do that today? I, I think the conditions in the family are a bit different. And uh -huh. at this time, there have been as many immigrant families as we have uh, uh, nowadays. And my father and my mother always cared about, even at the high school that I do my, uh, my, my, my homework, etc., etc. Even at this level, mm -hmm. they cared that a certain discipline mm -hmm. is going on. And often these children, and I worked 10 years with disemployed young children before I started exactly. the yeah. fair trade yeah. campaign, so it was the most crucial point to get some structure in their life. And I, I, my, the main work was to, to make networking with companies in the region that they get at least a, a chance to work one month or two months or three months in this company and to see how working life uh, goes. And this is something we have to find more ways to give these children a chance. And therefore, I think it's an excellent initiative mm -hmm. but for me the main thing is to be grounded and not to being a manager somewhere and just talking with these big guys somewhere if you are not grounded you even cannot understand the consumers mm -hmm. how the consumers behave mm -hmm. and that is something which still is very 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 important for me and still each afternoon or evening I hear the stories, what's go still going on yeah. at these schools. From your wife who works yeah. in one of these schools, yeah. Let me just ask you a more general question. We, we're talking about you trying to have an impact in terms of justice and fairness on an international, on a global level. Is, is Germany as a country, is it a country that you associate with social justice or with social injustice? Is Germany a fair country? Ah, that's a pretty good question, even three weeks before election. Um, in comparison to other countries, uh, I think it's a fair country, but still we have losers and winners. And, and the, the, the tricky question is if we, during the last years, if we got more losers and more mm -hmm. uh, 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 winners. And, and I think... We can't sit like here and say, okay, we have less death employees like in Spain or in Greece, everything goes well. If this is an attitude, it would be a problem. Mm -hmm. And I think even as I had a personal willing to improve my life, we need the same willingness that on a level of society, we have uh, that life is improving. And that means with older people, etc., etc. So. Still, there are a lot of challenges. And to sit here and say we are a fair country, no. We okay. are, let's say, on a good way. It's a great project. Yeah. Funny group. Yeah, and I, and, and I know, Dieter, that you know uh, a lot about the project because you're involved. Tell us. Yeah. yeah. Um, one piece was uh, the last one about fair deal, fair trade. Mm -hmm. And I was involved in the creation of the piece and uh, I stayed together with the group when they had their first play uh, in Stuttgart mm -hmm. some months uh, ago. And even I'm now involved in, in creating a, a new one. And this will take place by the end of November in the National Theatre of Nairobi. Oh yeah, before and you tell me about the new play, tell me about the kids. Because I'm, what, what, what impression did they make on you? What did they tell you about their lives? Life has totally changed because uh, being a, uh, 
living in a slum or being disemployed totally differs from the situation unemployed unemployed mm -hmm. uh, in 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 Germany yeah so they really had a, a terrible situation and arts with arts you sometimes can find out at least on your mood, on your behavior. Mm. It's not the way that they earn money, a lot of money with, with, uh, uh, with theater. It was just a, ch a change of your mind map. And that is something where uh, it's really powerful to see how the kids are changing and even how they are influencing or giving their attitude to other kids because mm. we know they are still, even in Nairobi, where are the biggest uh, uh, slums all over the world. Yeah, I absolutely. think one million or one and a half million, yeah. are, 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 it's huge. Mm. And, and this is uh, still, they are located with, with their theater in the middle of, of, uh, of this. And that's impressing how, how it's a way out of, of, uh, of their life. Yeah. And, and mm. I, we still want to support it, and for me it's real fun. Mm. The, the German director of the project, he was, he was uh, the artistic director. He was, he was in your He's office Austrian. yesterday. He's, He's Austrian. Austrian. Oh, we've got to get that right, yeah? yeah and yeah. he was in your office yesterday. Yeah, thought, yesterday. Yeah? Uh -huh. And uh, uh, Fairtrade Germany will support uh, uh, the, the, their next tour in, into Germany and the first play will be at the Fairtrade Awards, a big celebration we will have in next March here uh, in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And um, if possible, I think five or six times I also will play together with the group and I try to be as nasty as Possible. Well, tell us about the role you're going to be playing. Yeah, yeah, it's um, <laughs> a factory owner. Yeah, and um, mm. uh, negotiation about salary and things like that. And I will be as tough as a fair trade manager, but in the mm -hmm. the contrary. <laughs> and. Uh, I and, like this kind of thing. And, and, and your organization, the organization that you've built up in the last two decades, Transfair, yeah? Uh, all the principles that you've been talking about, about fair yeah. working conditions and fair wages and what have you, to what extent do you apply them in your own organization? If you would ask the, the employees if they feel well, mm -hmm. I think you would get uh, good answers. So the question, how is the atmosphere in the company? We play table kickers. Uh, of course, they do not earn as much as in the industry. We got a lot of marketing people coming from Mars, coming from retailers, uh, uh, coming to fair trade. And the level of salary doesn't correspond to the uh, management uh, uh, salaries in, in these companies. Mm -hmm. But they feel well. Mm -hmm. we, we have a good mixture of young and older people and we have a mixture of people who are NGO driven, who have lived and worked in Africa and marketing people who just came from a totally different business world. And I'm proud that these business people and online and, and social network young people that we form a team mm -hmm. working for one uh, aim. And uh, we do a lot of things together. We are now 34 people working and Okay, I'm so proud. that's your organization. You've, yeah. we've, we've learned about how you work. We've learned a little bit about your background. Here's the big question for me. When I was, when I was a youngster, like the, like the little uh, Dieter that we saw yeah. watering the garden there in, the, in that photo, yeah? I could sense that the world around me was a very unfair place, that there were people like us who have yeah. privileged lives and there were people, the vast majority of the people in the world, yeah, who really struggled, who lived with poverty and yeah. hardship, yeah? And I hoped in my lifetime it would change, yeah? Has it changed or has, has the world stayed the same? I fear mm -hmm. it has stayed the same. What's your take? Uh, no, when in our impression is, and, and our policy is producers at the driver's seat. So Fairtrade is not about charity, sending some money to somewhere in the place. That's okay. So I'm, I'm not telling that UNICEF and all the other initiatives are not doing good things. But the question is how you can influence your life. How can you be owner of your life, your working life? Mm -hmm. And here my impression is, 
especially in Kenya, in what we have seen in Africa, people are now more proud. Of course, they are still poor, or most of them are still poor. But the way they are thinking about, the way they are acting, uh, uh, is more independent. And fair trade just can, can give them a framework to express their opinion. And the producers now have 50% of of votes of all the decisions we do. That was not the case in, in, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And they are going to influence the region, the city. So it's not just doing something good in a, in a coffee cooperative, it's doing something at the region. I'm going to have to break you off there, but a very positive message, and I think you've won me over. Great stuff. Uh, that is your lot with Dieter Overath. He's been a very, very good guest. If you've enjoyed his company as much as I have, then come back to Talking Germany next week. Otherwise, you can visit my blog on our website. Um, take care. Bye-bye. Tschüss. -bye.